Well, let's take a look at quality of service. There are two images, and, and I just put the, the second one in here because I've been thinking, hey, you know, we have this picture that we can understand, I think, based on traffic. We all got, we all get it when we talk about traffic, when we talk about interstate traffic, we talk about congestion on the highway. You've been there, done that, wished you could be in the carpool lane, maybe you were in the carpool lane. That's congestion management. It prioritizes <clears throat> with a queuing mechanism on each interface. And we will look at the queuing mechanism, do, do a little configuration. And again, I got a, a, a packet trace or a lab that you can do to kind of hopefully get a sense of what we're doing with this thing. Everything's going to get a different priority. Who gets to use the highway? Who gets to use the carpool lane? Who gets to use the bandwidth that we have? The other one is congestion avoidance. And the image there is that says they stop here. This is a metered entrance that when we start getting a lot of traffic on the internet, and you probably experience this maybe on a daily basis, maybe on a regular, irregular basis, but you've experienced it, that you get ready to go on the interstate and tells you to wait. You got to wait your turn to get on. They're, they're controlling how much traffic can get on the interstate, how much traffic can be on the interstate to try to avoid the congestion that we have on these devices. We're going to do the same thing with our, uh, with our IP packets, except in this case, we're going to drop packets early. We're going to just, it's called, going to be called tail drop. The last packet that's get, that gets received is going to get dropped. And that works just fine for TCP because TCP will just say, hey, let me have it. Let me send it again. So we can use or leverage the, uh, the reliability portion of TCP uh, to do the dropping of these things. So two different methods to do quality of service, the congestion methods. Uh, we can do congestion management. Uh, prioritize the transmissions that are there or we can avoid the uh, congestion. The other thing that I'd say about quality of service is if you've got sufficient bandwidth, you don't need to do it. Uh, this is a concept, configurations that only need to take place if we have an insufficient bandwidth, if we can't do everything at once, if we can't make a phone call and watch a video at the same time and then do a download of a web page. If you have sufficient bandwidth, and I'm sure that you and I do, I, I do, and you probably do too, then we don't have to worry about it. So if, you're, if your enterprise has sufficient bandwidth that, that you can do all of the things that the, uh, that the enterprise needs, you don't have to worry about configuring quality of service. But it's still one of the objectives, one of the things that we need to know how to do just in case. These are images of with and the withouts, the one at the top, uh, no quality of service. We have the general use, the browsing updates, and it interferes with the video streaming and the online gaming that goes on with these things. Or maybe we can put phone calls instead of online gaming. Let's put emergency phone calls in there. I think that's always a, a something that we, we could think about uh, when we do that. So we have the ability to assign a certain amount of bandwidth to certain types of traffic uh, when we do this thing. Certain priorities to certain types of traffic. What does get the, the, uh, the priority here? Probably, you know, up here we, we have enough bandwidth in order to do uh, uh, Netflix or Amazon videos or maybe even a Zoom session. The browsing, how much do you need for browsing? And the, the question on browsing is probably not so much. Yeah, we look at it and say, oh, these web pages are slow. But the other things, the gaming, you gamers know that timing is critical. Delay is critical if you're doing gaming. I'm not a gamer. But if I'm watching a video, you know, I kind of like it to not pause and buffer and pause and buffer. I'd like for it to have enough bandwidth. Story on me and I had a router still around somewhere not using it right now that uh, that had this this option said hey you can go in here and configure quality of service on my router here and we'll assign a, a, a level and I don't remember what it was to video so that your videos are always complete. So, hey that sounds like a great idea. So I did that. 
And then I was doing some stuff and I said, you know, these web pages really seem slow. And and I go and do a speed test and on my 200 meg, I get like, you know, 20 or 30 or 50 meg or something like that. That comes back. The reason was that it had done exactly what shows in the bottom image. It had reserved a certain amount of bandwidth for video. I went in a situation that I needed that, so I took it off. Video and, and uh, my internet use could uh, coexist with each other. Plenty of bandwidth to do that. But again, only if we need to do this do, should you get into the configuration of these things. So what is it? It is a, the ability to provide a different priority uh, to different applications, users, data flows, and to guarantee a certain level of performance for some of these things. Which ones are going to be your high priority? You know, phone calls are, are going to be the ones that are in the highest priorities. And the reason is because emergency phone calls to be able to call the fire department or the police department or the whoever that we need to do. Uh, to protect life and limb for these things. Next is going to be video because we like our videos to be complete. We, if you're watching a, a, a football game or a basketball game or streaming a, a video, you don't want it to stop in the middle and start, uh, uh, and start buffering in order to get you the information. Uh, you don't want it to be, you know, delayed. The different levels and what this shows is colors. Colors usually are pretty good to represent uh, what goes on. We have a high priority here which is the red. The medium priority is the uh, orange and then the low priority is the green. It shows them the same size going out but what it does show is that the red gets first, the medium gets second, and the low gets third. And the things that were the cues here, the things here, the vi voice, video, and data are the general uh, uh, categories that we're going to have for these things. So what it winds up being is managed unfairness when we do that. And again, it, you only need to do this if you have insufficient bandwidth. If you've got plenty of bandwidth, not something that we're going to have to do elements of or the the parameters here bandwidth latency jitter and packet loss or so bandwidth and, and latency delay bandwidth the average number of bits this is not the the the, ho, the low to the high frequency this is the the data rate is really what we're talking about here the uh, the average number of bits of the data that can be transmitted from the source to the destination in one second megabits per second gigabits per second kilobits per second whatever we have Latency is the uh, the time difference between the transmission of the signal and the re receipt, the delay. And I guess that one of the delays that you may see if you watch the local news, you've got the reporter in the field and they've got their image there and they're sitting there and then the, you know, and the, the people in the in the studio are talking to them and and uh, and and w w we'll send it over to you, Karen, and Karen's sitting there shaking her head, and, and then all of a sudden the voice gets there. You can see that delay, that latency. We used to use uh, 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 direct TV uh, for television. We had local, obviously. Uh, actually, we only used it for uh, game ticket for football games so my wife could watch her Packers. Uh, but when you had the the local game and the and the satellite game if you were looking at them you could watch the kickoff on the uh, television on the local uh, cable network shift to the to the satellite because of the delay and see the kickoff again so the latency latency what is the delay that goes on jitter fancy words to remember here variability over time and latency uh, what it is is an inconsistent delay and that's when you get the voices jammed together and stretched out and I, I call them the uh, the yah ya the rah, rah, rah. packet lost and then we're packet lost or damaged TCP should take care of that if we do that if we have lost packets and we only want to have a certain percentage of those or a very low percentage of those for us to have accurate communications with these things. Quality service defined by the parameters that control the services prioritizes traffic based on the importance, uses congestion avoidance methods in order to do that. that wants to have the following things and this is what we all want. We want a high bandwidth, 
less latency and jitter. We don't want to have latency and jitter. We don't want to have the delay. We don't want to have the jitter, the inconsistency, the inconsistencies that go with it. And then a minimal data loss, all things that we want. And assurance that prioritizing one type of network traffic doesn't affect the others, that we don't give one, kind of like I talked about with me, that the, the, uh, uh, we're great for the videos, we just didn't, weren't watching that many videos, but it did affect the other one. It slowed down the, uh, slowed down the internet uh, browsing for those things. So we want to configure this so that one doesn't knock the other one out. Everything needs to get a little bit of time when we start doing this, if we need. So we have here an, an attempt here at bandwidth versus speed when we do these things. The bandwidth is the amount of speed available uh, to use the database data yeah data rate I think is maybe a better term for that term for that the speed of the connection here we go over time with these things uh, when we look at it latency is the the delay that goes on and jitter is the inconsistencies in the latency if we have a a, a standard or a continuous delay it's not going to affect the quality. It may af affect the timing that something gets there, uh, but it's not going to affect the quality. We had, and this is, a, is maybe a, a dumb latency, a dumb latency story, but this is a long time ago. Uh, we had a guy come into the dorm and start betting on what was going on. So I'll bet you this is going to happen. I bet you what's going to happen on the plays on a football game. And he'd been driving his car, listening to the game. The television, for some reason, was delayed so that the latency there, he knew what was theoretically what was going to happen before it did, but latency, delay. Uh, traffic types and TCP, we've talked about TCP. TCP tends to be greedy. TCP is constant. We have the window size. TCP is going to constantly try to increase the data that it goes through, the data rate, the, the bits per second. It's going to get up to the point that we say that we send a, a back off message and when we send a back off message you're sending too much data. It decreases by 50 percent and then it does the same thing again. Back off 50 percent. This is called a TCP, TCP sawtooth, the sawtooth waveform when we do that. It's going to be bursty and greedy. Takes as much bandwidth as it can get, especially applications. It's drop insensitive and the, the, the protocol that we're using right now for the, the, the uh, meeting that we're having going to be uh, UDP and I'll bring this over here just for a second. This is a, I did a scan just, just out of curiosity of a, of a Zoom session. Oh, cause I've filtered on TCP. But most, most of the packets are going to be UDP when we go down here. Not real big, but we have them. Transport TLS, we get in here, the application data, the, the transport layer, TLS, transport layer security. We're, 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 the paid versions are, are, they are claimed to be encrypted and I got no reason to, to think that they're not encrypted because we get the, uh, the negotiation. But typically we're going to use UDP for these, these types that are going to be drop sensitive and delay sensitive. TCP, download a web page, download a, an FTP server when we do those things. UDP, uh, UDP voice, it's not going to be bursty, it's going to be consistent. It is drop and delay sensitive. Uh, one way requirements for them, we need a delay of uh, less than 150 milliseconds. General, uh, jitter less than 30 milliseconds. We'll have some slides on this in a little bit. Packet loss less than 1%. And then the bandwidth between 30K and 128K. You look at that. That's not a lot of data. Voice packets are very small. Uh, so we don't really have to reserve a lot of bandwidth. And I think when we got voice over IP, we reserved 64K for the uh, uh, voice uh, when we did that. We did a quality of service because we had a, one, we had a T1 and 1.544 meg at the time. Wanted to be sure that the phone calls always worked. And I think we reserved, I think it was, six, if I recall correctly, it was 64K. So maybe it was 128. 
but not a whole lot of bandwidth is required. Video is bursty and greedy, drop and delay insensitive, one-way requirements, latency less than 150 milliseconds and the jitter less than 30, uh, about the same as we have for, actually the same that we have is for voice and the packet loss less than 0.1% to 1% uh, bandwidth, more bandwidth, 384k uh, to 20 meg plus, depending on the quality, depending on whether we're doing HD or, or what what kind of videos uh, we're doing uh, with these things. Statistics here, the things that we have. If you look at, and I want to go to the settings here, you can go in to the statistics of the meeting that we're in and then we have the audio here speed ascend 24k uh, the frequency 24k latency 70 milliseconds so it's less than 150 that we needed latency 64 is changing jitter 3 milliseconds uh, jitter th less than 30 milliseconds we need the video latency 71 milliseconds less than 150 and less than 30 uh, for the uh, for the others that we have uh, available for those things so we have until frame, frames per second here and then what we have for the uh, the screen sharing the screen sharing separate entity is going to have a different latency different jitter that goes on and that's why sometimes when I uh, change the screen and I talk and you don't get the change and then there may be or something going on with the audio because the audio doesn't have the same delay as the video or as the screen sharing that they you know we're going to have a little delay for the architecture itself the quality of service architecture uh, three techniques we're going to have to identify and mark uh, what we're going to use and that you know this this kind of makes sense in the process we're going to go through first we're going to have to identify the traffic mark the traffic uh, write a policy and then apply the policy the things that we would do in order to make these things work for us uh, from one to the other. So we're going to apply e apply quality of service to a single node. Uh, use of queuing, scheduling, traffic shaping tools to apply the quality of service to a single node uh, when we do these things. And then applying the policy management in a network. Uh, the techniques to control and manage the, the uh, network traffic. So are we going to apply it to a single device or are we going to apply it to the same to the entire network? What are we going to do? Three levels, the best effort, differentiated services, and guaranteed services. Best effort is the default. Best effort says we haven't done anything. That is going to be a first come, first serve basis. Kind of like what you maybe get into at the uh, uh, the, 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 they always say the DMV because the lines are so awful there. Maybe at the grocery store, or the checkout at uh, at Walmart or Target or someplace like that. First come to get into the line, first serve with these things. Differentiated services, the traffic and applies the quality of service to those things. Differentiated services go down there if you look in the image. It talks about first class, business class, coach class that we would have uh, getting into an airline. So if you're in first class, you obviously get a lot better service than if you're in the guaranteed bandwidth, uh, the guaranteed the bandwidth and delay that we we guarantee a certain amount of bandwidth, kind of thought what I've been talking about uh, with, the, with the voice or with the video, the one that I consider it guaranteed or reserved that amount of bandwidth only for that type of information and you may wonder how can it do that and it can do that because in the let me go to a tcp here we probably can do it here too yeah even here differentiated services field and this doesn't have any uh, sort of uh, of a marking in it so dscp unknown it's not set we're going to look at try to look at in packet tracer this particular field this is where the priorities are going to be set and tcp dscp cs0 which is which is a uh, which is a first come first serve basis a, uh, a a best effort how can we do this and then in the uh, uh, switches at the layer two we have a type of service field that goes in when we do uh, uh, 802.1q when we do marking when we configure vlans 
So the classifications, uh, uh, differentiating the traffic uh, to implement these things, and then and what, is, what is this, the process of doing this, it's an identification step, examines the fields in the packets to classify them. And they can be classified on a per hop basis or on a net per hop basis, identified at a router, but its class is not MAC. Map not marked. Information is not passed on to the other routers. And oh, by the way, in the Cisco world, uh, there there isn't any trust. On the network-wide basis, the packets identified at the router and marked with an IPP or a DSCP, depending on. And this this is really we get into the age of these things as as to what they're going to be the. IPP is the uh, the ones IP precedence. You think I could remember that DSCP? I can remember the differentiated services. And then we're going to have layer two or layer three markings. Class of service COS or type of service is going to be marked in, into the uh, into the layer two areas. Uh, layer three class of service PCP priority code point type of service. The names of these change over time a little bit depending on what depend yeah depending on the changes that go into the into the protocols themselves network wide basis common methods we can match the class of service the ipp dscp or access control list the one that i'm going to do the demo i'm going to do is the acl the one that i've got set up for you to do and it's got the complete instructions available uh, with it you're going to use the uh, uh, the markings that are in here, we're going to use the type of the protocol types, HTTP, uh, voice, and IC, uh, ICMP, uh, to assign each of them a different priority. The priority values uh, to determine the quality of service to be applied, uh, the traffic pl planes to determine it, to the, uh, to the NAFIC, yeah, traffic frames and packets carry priority information used to classify the packets <clears throat> so that the same class can be forwarded with the same quality of service and where does that happen that happens in the uh, the, the packet itself uh, the layer three down here the ipp value three bits zero to seven the dscp or six bits we're going to look at some of the numbers and and don't get uh too too uh hung up on what they are but just the different classifications depending on the age of the system uh, are what we're going to use for these things. IPP value uh, or the uh, DSCP, COS, PCP value, each of those things down here. And you know there's a class of service here used in an ISL frame. Uh, the three most significant digits, digits in the two byte uh, control information in the 802.1 Q. So class of service, uh, ISL, we don't really worry, we, have, we really don't have to worry about that anymore because you're probably never going to see it. PCP value, uh, 802.1Q, IPP type of service, and whether how many bits that we're going to use for these things. So the layer two, class of service or priority code point type of service, you may also see it called. Uh, the IP packets carry an IP precedence or a differentiated services code point value, depending, again, uh, to, in to indicate the priority. Some of these are going to be age. Classification and marking, what the quality of service treatment on the incoming traffic will get. The layer two uh, class of service, the three-bit priority field for the VLANs, and these are the what we're going to do. Voice here, typically voice is going to mark itself. Once we do the voice VLAN, it's going to mark itself as a, as a PCP value priority 5. Acronym VO voice, video 4, down to the lowest we have background. We have some other things higher than voice. We have the inner network control, the network control functions, the, uh, the, the communications to uh, manage the network information. The layer 3 type of service is going to be an 8-bit field, assigns a precedence to each of these things and then the IP packets uh, use the most significant three bits and it maps the packet to a particular uh, behavior for these things and you might, you might say hey okay so I have a, how do we do these things if 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 you told me that the uh, layer 2 has a marking 
And then the layer three has, how does it go from one to the other? And if I can remember this, and I don't want that one, it's a little bigger. It has a uh, settings, it has a, uh, a table that allows the, uh, the mapping of one type. If I can remember the commands and that, so it's, uh, we can do maps here. And when we do that, we have the DSCP numbers and the COS numbers. Uh, from uh, DSCP mapping to COS class of service, layer three to layer two, layer two to layer three mapping. So there is within the system itself, the, the routers, the devices, and that was a layer three switch. There is a map to go from. The type of service uh, is concerned with the flow of traffic, the source destination IP, the source port destination port, and the transport protocol is gonna be used with these things. The classification, uh, classification procedures, the packets are classified according to the DSCP, separated into queues, and then marking for a closer examination, we can have shaping or dropping. Shaping is when we buffer the information. Shaping is going to have to be used for those devices that are insensitive to, uh, to delay and to, uh, and, and to jitter. The IP precedence values, we have a routine priority, immediate flash, flash override, critical, internet control, and network control. And if you ever wrote a military message, some of these things, priorities may sound familiar, you know, like routine priority and immediate flash, all of those are, are messages. And remember that a lot of this, much of this, most of this, early development of this was by DOD, the DARPANET, the Defense Advanced uh, which did uh, create these things. So the IP precedence value determine the class of what goes on the on these things. What kind of a priority are we going to get? And I said we're going to have some numbers that go into here. So yeah, we got all of this stuff. Uh, what does each of them mean? We have a class one. The, the low drop probability are going to be the AF1121, the markings that go on. Uh, with these things, the medium drop and then the high drop probability. High drop is going to be our least least required, I guess, traffic that we would have with these things. So the per hop behavior for these things and the AF assured forwarding when we do these things, EF expedited. Uh, drop forward or reclassify are all things that can happen with it, uh, depending on how we do the configuration drop forward and then if there's certain circumstances we may need to reclassify it to a higher priority or a lower priority depending upon uh, what goes on with the band we kind of like traffic you know high traffic yeah we have the uh, uh, the carpool lane in the in the two o'clock in the morning anybody can drive in a carpool lane they don't care because as the traffic the congestion changes then the uh, priorities may change we may get a reclassification of things this is a kind of a look at the numbers, AF32 assured forwarding, and we're going to have a binary component as well as a, uh, as a decimal, and we're going to have hexadecimal on some of them too. The, the IPP011 going to be a class three DSCP here, 01110, and then the, the behavior uh, three here when we look at these things, the drop probability is going and it gives us the uh, the decimal here is going to be a 28 for these things. And you can you can go through and th these are again a, a number of D DSCP values, the decimal value, the meaning of each of these things. AF11 is going to be low, uh, going around and around and around for the drop probability, high, low, medium, depending on the classification. The DSCP value, uh, the the, the binary value, and I think what we're going to see in that is actually going to be a hexadecimal value, and then the meaning of each of them, expedited EF, expedited forwarding, assured forwarding, class selector, default forwarding. Default forwarding is going to be the best effort here for these things, and it's going to be DSCP, it's going to be zero, which I think that we saw in CS0, we've had none in the, in the pack, in the frames that we looked, packets that we looked at. 
uh, because it d didn't have anything. We have critical, uh, the high priority routine. We have a priority assigned to these things, immediate, flash override. What are we going to do? And, and the different priority, if you're ever going to actually configure this, you'll go and look these numbers up. These, these are not things that you need to uh, memorize, just kind of conceptually, what are we trying to do? Uh, the device trust, the Cisco interface, can be configured to trust the DSCP IPP or class of service in the IP packet frames. When it's enabled, the device is said to be in a trusted state. All Cisco devices are in an untrusted state by default. Uh, different methods to classify the, the incoming trust states are uh, configure the interface to trust the DSCP value in the IP packet. The interface to trust the class of service to DSCB map, the one that we looked at earlier, and then apply a standard or an extended access control list. And we haven't done access control list, but we've used them a couple of times, and we're going to use them again here in just a minute. The process to do this is we're going to identify the traffic, classify the traffic, write a policy for the traffic, and then we're going to apply the policy. What I want to do before we keep going is to do a demo where that's exactly what we're going to do. We have the boss up here, and I've got my, I, I do have a, a, a document for this one so I can keep all of the different maps straight for this one. And then the one that you did, it finally dawned on me that, hey, I can use the same name over and over, and it make, becomes a little more consistent with this thing. But the boss has told you that, if I ever can't get to the internet, you might as well update your uh, uh, update your resume because you're out of here. So what we want to do is to assign him, our boss, a high priority, a certain amount of bandwidth. We want to give him a high priority to get to the internet. So we're going to go to the first router here and start our configurations with these things. The first thing that we're going to have to do is to write an access list. And we're going to access list, and I need to number it to one. Permit, and then it's going to permit his host, and his host is 10.10.10.12. So we're going to use it in order to identify what we're going to use. We're going to use his IP address, which means that we probably want him to have a static IP address for this so it never changes. The next thing that we need to do is classify the traffic. And then we use a class map. And the class map here, it says a word, a match all, or a match any. The match all is going to be the default. But what we're going to do here is do a word, and we're going to call this uh, class map boss. And then when we get into the configuration of the class map, we're classifying the traffic here. We're going to the options that we have here, description, exit, or match. We're going to match, and we can match an access group, and any, a class map on down the line. What we're going to do is uh, match uh, match the access group that he did, access group one, which is the access control list that we had. So we've defined the traffic, and the traffic, the traffic winds up being the single IP address for our boss. Let's go up one here, and after that, we're going to do a policy map. We're going to establish a policy for this thing. We'll call this boss precedence because we're going to assign the boss's traffic a priority, a precedence for this thing. Back into here, we can, we can do a class, an exit, or a no. So the class map that we use here is the class map that we just created where we classified the traffic which was the boss. And once we get into it, what can we do? Uh, we can do a priority uh, service or policy. We're going to set his precedence to, and we're going to set his precedence to, set his precedence to five. Now, after we've identified the traffic and we've written a policy, we've identified the traffic using the access control list that said, this is the boss. Then we write the access list, we have a classification, we classify the traffic as the boss, not a whole lot of traffic in there. After that, we write a policy that says, hey, we're going to set set his 
traffic all to precedence level five. Now we need to apply that, and it's going to be interface gig zero, zero, and we can have one policy uh, per direction for this thing. So we're going to do, on this case, we're going to do a, and it's going to be service policy, and you can see that the tabs really do work for these things. It's going to be an input policy, and boss precedence, the one that we did right wherever it is, right think that we named it boss press <clears throat> for it if it didn't it'll tell me that it didn't if i had made a mistake here and it didn't exist it would tell me that it didn't exist so that takes care of the configuration on the first we now are going to go to the next device the second device here and we're going to eventually get down to giving him a certain amount of uh, we're going to enable and config t the first thing we're going to do on the second router is we'll do a class map because we have to classify the traffic again. Class map. And we'll call it, what did I call it here? Uh, class map boss presence 5. Names, I guess. But that's because we're now going to match match the precedence <coughs> 5, the precedence that we assigned in the traffic on the other router. So we're going to match that. And after we have identified the traffic, and the traffic here is everything that's going to have a, 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 a precedence level of 5 configured on it, then we're going to do a policy map again. And the policy map here we'll call boss. When we get into it, we're going to use the class map again, and that was boss precedence 5, right? Boss precedence 5. And then in here we can do the kind of things that the... Uh, the the differences the the uh, yeah, the the help screen that we have so we can assign him a bandwidth we can do a certain number of bits kilobits per second and this is kilobits per second not meg not gig or a percent so like we're going to assign him a uh, twenty percent and now we need to apply it it's the same thing it's identify the traffic write a policy what are we going to do with the traffic and then apply the policy. So in this case, we're going to go to interface gig 0, 0. It'll be a service policy. And this is going to be an output, and this is going to be boss bandwidth. So we apparently did <coughs> make that work. What I want to do, 182.168.1.1, and see if this works, is we'll go to him and we'll use the... Uh, uh, one at a time and we can look at the packets and this may start out with uh, some protocol that I don't want to use. If it goes through the entire process first it's going to have to go through ARP to find the MAC address and it's going to have to go through DNS. Actually I'm not going to DNS because I'm going to use we'll use the go for this. So now I have and we're doing ARP. It, it used ARP to get there. We're still going to go through the ARP protocol. This is probably maybe a little useful of what is the process we're going to have to arp we're sending it out all of these devices uh, to get from one to the other so we have the arp protocol and now we're finally getting into hopefully some tcp when we do these things and this little purple here says that yep i've got i got something here and when i go into the inbound into the dscp it didn't have anything, but we set it as a, uh, as it goes out, we have now modified the differentiated services code point is zero hexadecimal hex 28. So it's going to, we actually have configured this thing so that it will give the boss some priority. We go on to the next router, and I've got too many of these things going here. Then... The outbound PDUs. I see. This is this is uh, this is the ARP. I didn't really want. I got in the wrong one. I think. But now we got it over here. We got. Uh, except we got a bunch of. I got too much traffic going on. Too much. Too much of a mess for these things. We have the outbound. Where is this DSCP? The 28 and the inbound is the 28. So we have in fact configured the traffic to allow the boss to have his bandwidth go back to real time get all of the uh, 
get all of the other stuff done here and you know, maybe go back to simulation mode where we don't have the ARP traffic in the way we'll do a go because we're just getting the TCP traffic going here if we didn't use an IP address we would have uh, uh, DNS going through there also and this is kind of a handy way to see what is going on in the system so we get the markings here you can see what goes on inside we have the source IP the destination IP uh, the MAC addresses that we have uh, uh, gotten our traffic uh, to with uh, ARP our traffic our MAC addresses with ARP we have the DSCP here. We have the markings that go into this thing. So it's just telling the routers priority handling for this traffic. And when we get into the uh, to the switch here, it's still going to have the same uh, it's the same information that that goes. So just a a quick and dirty look at what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what we're doing is identifying the traffic, marking the traffic configuring a policy for the traffic and then applying the policy it is break so let's finish up identifying the policy the things that we just did these are the commands at least sort of that we just did uh, the, when we did a policy map the name and the class map the class map are have to be applied have to be configured first the one at the bottom here the class map uh, we can name it and then uh, whatever we're going to do, however we're going to configure the traffic or to, or to uh, identify the traffic and the, and the one, the, uh, the lab that you have is a little different than this one. We don't use an access control list. We use the, the type of traffic, HTT, I think it's voice, HTTP, web, ICMP, different, different priorities for each of those. And you, you would expect a different priority for each of those. Policy map associates the traffic with one or more quality of service policies. We can have a maximum of 256 class statements. We can have here class name. We can have multiple, yeah, multiple classes within a policy. We can only have one policy applied per interface per direction. So if we have like, you're going to have the three uh, different types of traffic, you have to allow that policy or have that policy access or manage uh, apply <clears throat> uh, used to apply all three of the classification maps the class map is used to classify the traffic input policy maps apply the uh, mark uh, the received at the interface uh, can drop packets that don't uh, conform to the specified permitted rates and when a packet exceeds the limits, its priority is reduced or marked down. This is a situation we're going to have policing and uh, we're, going to, we're going to drop packets or we're going to delay packets. Policing and shaping, the two different techniques that we can use with these things. A packet exceeds the limits, priority level can be reduced, it can be marked down, can be dropped, or it can be, uh, uh, if we're using shaping, it, it can be buffered. Uh, includes up to 32 classes, the input policy maps. The default class is defined as the class default keyword. And the default, like all other defaults, is if nothing else applies, then let's do this. Uh, the default is going to be here. The, the, the class provides quality of service actions for packets that don't match any of the other uh, Class class is in the policy map. Output policy map is on the output interface. Uh, quality of service actions for these: the queuing, the waiting, the bandwidth limiters. We did the, we did the bandwidth on our output. Shape limiters. Default class uh, is used to match the packets that do not match any other classes. All other defaults. If it if like the default route doesn't match anything else, send it up. Send it there. Uh, only the packets that are already matched by an input policy map are matched by the output. Same or a similar image. This was the original image that I didn't overwrite here. Congestion management, congestion avoidance. The two things that we're gonna we're gonna talk about here for a couple of minutes. The, the congestion, we're inevitably, I guess maybe it's not inevitable, but but we're probably going to have uh, the queues, the logical ordering or reordering of the packets and the frames. So round robin is one of the methods that just open all these up. We can have round robin 
weighted round robin or low latency LLQ low latency queuing round robin if I have an A and a B and a C or whatever I have with these things I have a, a and a B and a C then in the round robin I'll send one to A one to B one to C and then we'll go go back and do it again in the A and the B and the C. If I have a weighted round robin, in the weighted round robin, let's use different colors here, let's use this. Weighted, I go to A to B and back to A and then to C and then back to A and to B, A and then C. Weighted round robin is one of them gets listed more often than the other one. The low latency queuing is what we're, we're going to, LLQ is where we assign these queues here, the uh, voice, the video, and the data. Low latency, we're going to assign uh, the voice, the highest, we're going to get the voice, uh, go voice information out on the queue, then the video, and then the data in order to be able to provide all of that nice, smooth uh, networking prioritization considerations uh, the data classified based on the importance to ensure that business of critical applications do not suffer loss these are kind of maybe confusing but kind of conceptually uh, what we're going to do with these things and I'll go back to to them that we have here we have the voice over IP and if you see the EF here it's going to go and we're going to assign the EF traffic the up we will reserve 30 percent for it uh, the uh, also QT3 which doesn't show up in these things is also going to go in here network control traffic CS6 can go down here with the other 70 percent of the traffic and all of the other traffic here is going to go with the other other 70 percent that goes on so We've reserved 70% or, or have 70% left over after we reserve 30% of it. So what are we doing with this stuff? And, and these are things that you obviously have to make some value judgments on what we want to be able to do with these things. Class-based weighted fair queuing used as a scheduling tool for prioritizing data applications. And that's what we're doing here. Video, high bandwidth. Priority queuing with LLQ, low latency queuing, uh, most preferred prioritization mechanism uh, for interactive video, and then voice. Priority queuing, LLQ, low latency queuing, most preferred for the interactive voice transmissions, phone calls. Class-based weighted fair queuing, uh, preferred method for the non-interactive voice transmission. It's kind of what we're doing. Uh, we have voice transmission. We also have the uh, non-interactive video that we're using. <clears throat> the Cisco queuing mechanisms that we can have. FIFO first in, first out. Not going to be good for voice or video for these things. And again, that's the, the line that you get in at the store or at the, at the wherever you're going. Uh, first, first come, first serve basis. Uh, priority queuing, uh, the lower priority queues are served only when the higher priority queues are empty. We're going to delay some of the traffic and the, the thing that has to be avoided here is, so, is that we don't assign such a high priority uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the high priority and to the priority stuff to the voice and video that the web uh, Traffic doesn't get any priority. It, get, it gets uh, blocked because of the higher priorities that are assigned to everything else. Custom queuing uh, services 16 queues in a weighted round robin fashion. It's going to introduce delay and jitter when we do this. Uh, weighted fair queuing uh, algorithm divides the Ethernet bandwidth by a number of flows. Uh, no bandwidth guarantees that latency can occur in higher priority traffic if we do this the weighted fair queuing each of them gets a different weight class based weighted fair queuing we're putting a couple of a couple of different things in here guarantees the exact bandwidth of certain classes higher priority traffic does not suffer latency when we use these things we've looked at this this one actually i think 
has some, let's say we have the uh, virtual LAN here, priority five that we, that we have with this thing. We go down here, differentiated services field. It has a priority to assign, assigned to an expedited form that would go into this thing. D DSCP zero, two E is going to be the hexadecimal number, ECN. The different ones, differentiated services, ECN, the the priorities are assigned, and we have both a layer two and a layer three data packet. Congestion avoidance. We talked about TCP windows earlier, and we had the demo, and that's one of the things that is negotiated by the two devices at startup. The weakest, the one that has the smallest capability, the least capability, actually the receiving end is going to be the the one that's going to dictate what the window size is going to be. I can only accept so much data. I can only process so much data at a time. That negotiation process takes place when, when we do the, uh, the three-way handshake. Uh, when they're full at the outgoing interface, the packets at the end are dropped, and these, this is going to be called tail drop. Uh, maximum minimum thresholds are going to be established and minimizes and then it establishes and minimizes the global synchronization that has to go on with these things. The the queue depth for these things, no action. If if we have an empty queue up to the minimum threshold, we don't have to do anything. We can accept everything. No action, zero to three hundred, whatever we're setting as the threshold for these. The number of packets in the queue, uh, the minimum threshold. No action. The number of packets here, we go from the minimum threshold to the maximum threshold. We're going to gradually increase the percentage of packets that are going to be dropped, in this case from 5 uh, to 20 percent. Uh, number of packets in the queue between the mix, maximum and the minimum, minimum and the maximum. Specify a percentage of the packets that are discarded. Weighted means you set priorities by class. When we do that and then after we get above the maximum threshold full queue all of the packets are going to be dropped and this is this process is the tail drop this is another kind of can we do this thing the weight weighted random early detection w red when we do these things we have a flow here when we have a flow we're going to have tail drop we're going to have a, a window size the maximum and the minimum uh, that goes in to these things. We uh, window size gets increased, window size gets reduced, or window size gets increased based on what kind of flows that we can have with this. We have the window size was reduced. We we had a flow that was valid here. We we decrease the window size, and over here we increase the window size when we do these things. So now we have a second flow that goes on with these things, and a third flow that goes on with them. In the global synchronization, the flows flows back off or increase simultaneously, and it leaves the bandwidth underutilized that we have. That's a just a kind of a look at yeah, what what do we want these things? How do we want them to appear? Two, a number of other things. Policing here is going to be to control bursty traffic, and it makes the designated traffic flows get to the correct bandwidth. Uh, changes the precedence of the packets to chop off the excessive flow. So policing is when we're going to when we're going to control what goes on with the policies. Uh, causes a lot of TCP resends because it's going to drop traffic or it's going to uh, uh, reclassify traffic. Changes the precedence of the packet to the chopped off excessive flows, or it may just drop the traffic. Get a lot of resends with this thing. It's used in the ingress tools or the ingress for these uh, for these devices. And three different types. We can have individual, aggregate, or unconditional priority policing are all things that can happen with these things. Policing is going to be a harsh arrangement. A more gentle one is going to be traffic shaping. And in traffic shaping, uh, control the... the uh, outgoing interface and the, the, the shapers are going to buffer traffic, excess traffic. 
when we think about that we're probably not going to want this four hour video uh, we want to be able to have it without having the uh, the buffering to go on with it or voice we probably don't want these to do but the L low low LLQ, uh, the low latency queuing of class-based weighted fare queuing are what are going to happen in these things. And we have a shaper that's going to take care of managing what goes on. Uh, sh use a shaping rate to uh, schedule the transmission of packets from the output queues. Ensures that the transmission rate of the packets doesn't exceed the, doesn't exceed the shaping rate. Shapers are going to, again, they're going to buffer with these things and the different techniques that can be used from one to the other. Uh, congestion management tools for these class-based class weighted fair queuing and, and low latency LLQ, uh, low latency queuing are, are the processes. The kind of uh, what does each of these things look like and why do they, and why do they look like? When we do these things, if we have policing here, if we go above, and this is kind of a, a, a dim line here, this, these are going to be our limits. When we go above the policing, this, this information up here and up here it just simply gets chop, chopped off. It gets dropped. If we have shaping when we go above these levels, this area up here gets, gets buffered, and then when we get the sufficient bandwidth, it's going to get sent. For these things. So buffering, dropping, enforce a rate limit by dropping or marking down packets, marking them down, lowering the priorities. Shaping, used to enforce a rate limit, and it's going to use buffers. It's going to buffer the information. We're going to have a delay and jitter with shaping. We're going to have we're going to have no delay, no delay, and no jitter with this. We're going to have a lot of resend or may have a lot of resins, TCP resins. Down here we're going to have a jitter and delay, jitter and delay with these things, or at least delay, <clears throat> probably jitter along with, with them also. Kind of a summary here, policing, drops or remarks, no buffering, TCP retransmissions, no jitter and delay for this. It's going to be harsh. We're going to have a lot of retransmissions, or we're going to have retransmissions for this. The shapers don't drop traffic, they delay traffic. Uh, we're going to have delay or jitter, maybe both uh, with these. It's going to be gentler on the traffic. There are just a few slides on troubleshooting. What I want to do is to do those few slides on troubleshooting and combine these labs with those labs and, and combine that with lunch so that we don't do a few here, try do a few minutes worth of lab and then, or a few minutes worth of lecture and then go on with those things. So a couple of topics left here, but not that many slides in those topics. The first one here is troubleshoot network service issues when we do those things. Uh, network resolution, DNS issues, client uh, configuration or connectivity are the things that can uh, be a function with it. We have DHCP configuration, DHCP functionality, source NAT, end user NAT, and NTP issues. Each of those, I think, are going to be in, in these here. I just want to open all of these up. So DNS resolution, the DNS server settings. Do we have the right IP address? Host connectivity. Can we get to the DNS server? Or have we, and I'll go one that's not here, have we put an override IP address into the host file? Because remember, the host file gets loaded first. It's going to be in the cache. Once something's cached, we're not going to go to the DNS server to look for the uh, IP addresses. We're going to use what's in the cache. So big thing in DNS servers, do we have the right IP address and can we get to it? The other one is the service actually working correctly. DHCP. Is the relay agent uh, configured correctly? Broadcast domains, router stop broadcast, we want to use a centralized DHCP server. Can I get there? If it's on the other side of a router, do I have a DHCP uh, relay agent configured? And can the relay agent get to the DHCP server? Does it have a path to get there? Can I ping that IP address that I've configured as the, uh, as the relay agent? Uh, and on the uh, the DHCP issues, is the address pool depleted or 
unlike them or like the mistake that I made, is the scope there? Have we actually configured the scope that we need? Remember that the DHCP server will give an address to the relay agent based upon the IP address of the interface that it came from, the network that it came from. Uh, no conflict between the dynamic and the static address assignments. We can configure the DHCP servers to check to see if somebody has assigned a static address to an address that they're about to be given out. If that's the case, it won't offer that address. Otherwise, it will. And basically what it does is ping that IP address to see if, uh, if it's already in use. If it is, it's not going to be assigned. Windows doesn't, none of them like uh, multiple IP addresses. Windows will typically just shut down both of the interfaces. Ensure that there are server-to-server -server communication. In this case, server-to-server -server, if we have multiple DHCP servers running, one is a backup to the other, which you can do, but keep in mind that when we give out a DHCP address, we get a lease time. So we get to keep that address for a certain amount of time. And if a DHCP server goes down, it, it, it probably isn't going to destroy your network eventually, immediately. It will eventually because the, uh, uh, the, the leases will time out. What we want to do is get it back up before the leases do time out. It's correct net issues, correct configuration that we've labeled the interfaces. We label them correctly in, inside and that, inside and that, not outside uh, to do those things. Correct routes are identified. Access control list is correct that the users that should be able to get NATed addresses do get NATed addresses. Uh, all of the networks are permitted by the access control list. And that we, we don't have something that's blocking the either the private or the public addresses to do these things. NAT address pool is not depleted. And, and if we do dynamic, maybe that we use the overload command so that if we do run out of NAT addresses, we go automatically into PAT, port address translation. Uh, and port address translation, one net, one address, multiple uh, mappings to that single one. Uh, ver verify that the router interface definitions are correct. That we have routes back to the public addresses that we've got into our, uh, in, in our NAT pool. That if we go out with one of these public addresses, that we're not adding to, can we get back, that they, that they have routes. NTP issues, it says correct, use the appropriate commands. NTP was a pretty uh, simple protocol. We need to check it occasionally to be sure that we actually are updating and keeping the uh, the times correct. Uh, becomes a whole lot easier. You look at something like a, uh, a syslog server is what time did these things get here? What are the times that are on it? Are they the correct times? When we're looking at multiple uh, devices and multiple actions, the correct time sure makes things a lot easier than if we're just uh, having a time that all of the devices are have the same time. Then we've got to go and mentally do the offset for when things actually happen. A number of slides for the, the, the troubleshooting ones that we have here. In a minute, one other short slide set and then we'll get into the labs. SNMP network management issues, SNMP issues, telnet issues, and SSH issues. And SNMP uh, that the agent services are running, that we've configured it, that the, that the uh, UDP ports are open. We can actually communicate with these things. Community strings match. I told you that uh, Windows doesn't, Windows doesn't like SNMP. I had to turn SNMP server uh, the agent software on on my Windows machine. Some of it is now working. Most of it isn't, as you saw. Uh, but it had to be turned on. I had to configure the uh, uh, community string in here. And the community string has to be the same as it was running on PRTG, as on the uh, network management system, in order to be able to uh, get from one to the other. And verify that the ports are not blocked at port 161 and 162 are available. I can send the information in and out of uh, both of the devices that we haven't filtered them. Telnet, verify that the address is reachable. Ping the address. Can I get there? Uh, the transport protocols. We really don't want to use 
Telnet, if at all possible. We want to use SSH, which I just put up there, but that the transport protocol is correct. The default, the default transport protocol is going to be Telnet. So if we have not changed it, it's going to be Telnet. Credential information. Remember that in the default configuration with Telnet, it says login. And if we do login and we haven't configured a password, in Packet Tracer, it just says that it's dropped. What you're what you're going to get, I think, unless they've changed it, in, a, in an actual real piece of equipment is it will say that login is configured, but there's no password. You have to configure a password if you have login. If you want anybody to be able to connect at any time, just give the no login command, and it won't require a login. Not something that you want to do. I'm just saying that you, that you can do it, but you do have to have a password configured on the VTY lines, the virtual terminal lines. Verify the credential information. We can also, when we do uh, AAA, we can also do a local username and password and have them, them users uh, log in using their username and password. Access control list permit the traffic that we haven't stopped the port 23 traffic. Port 23 is open that the VTY lines are available. There are a limited number uh, routers typically going to have five of them, VTY04. Uh, switches typically 16, VTY0 to 15. Uh, we can check if we have 15 people connected, then we're not going to be able to do that. You don't have to allow access to all of these lines, and you may not want to do that. How many people do you want connected to a device at any given time? You may get, you know, a couple people trying to do, do, uh, configurations at the same time, probably not something that's going to work out to our advantage for that. SSH, uh, verify the version. Remember, the SSH version 1 and version 2 are not compatible with each other. Uh, the login command, have we, uh, have we changed the transport protocol to SSH? The key size, if we've up graded, updated from SSH version 1 to SSH version 2, we may not have a long enough key because SSH, SSH2 requires a longer key. Access control list. An access control list is going to show up with things consistently that the access control list are not preventing uh, the configuration or the, the, uh, the transmission of, the, of that particular protocol from one resource to the other resource.